Here's your small Honda needing brakes. Let's take a look and see how to change these things out. In this video we're going to go over some small Hondas. Uh, now however, this will cover other bikes, Yamaha, Suzuki's. They all use similar type brakes and the procedure is pretty much the same. Uh, things may change as you get into newer. This, uh, since this video is about Hondas, this will cover the one, the, the bike we're working on is a CT70. It's a 1970 CT70. Um, however, that'll work on the Honda 50s, pretty much most of the 50s. I think some of the brakes were a little bit different on, um, I think the QA50. It had like, the shoe had like a little round joining ring or something and a bolt that you put there it was a little bit different but for the most part this is a, a, a static type post that still sits there and then you've got your can that actually operates the uh, uh, shoes that spreads them out but that'll cover your 50s uh, all your Honda 70s like uh, CT70, CL70, SL70, XL70, XR75, XR80s, CRF50, uh, CRF70s, CRF uh, 125s. This will go all the way up to this brake procedure on for shoes should cover all the way up to like uh, some of the CB 250s and such. Of course it's going to be bigger shoes but um, and this will cover from their years pretty much from when they're made all the way to current. I think they still use the shoe, shoe design now. But um, watch the video there's some little tips and tricks in here such as like when you change out the rear brakes uh, a lot of people unscrew the adjusters for the chain and have to readjust the chain. You don't have to do that and I'll show you in this video how there's some spacers you need to look for uh, on the front speedometer or on the front brake hub. Some of them have speedometer gears in them. You need to make sure the gear don't fall out or if it's greased correctly and, and such. So let's uh, get into the video and you'll see what, what we're talking about. Okay, let's take a look at the brake before we tear into it. The first thing I would recommend looking at is this brake shoe actuator arm. Previously before I had to actually take this bar off and set it up one or two splines in order to be able to still be able to adjustment. That spring was smashed because it was uh, it was tightened up so tight and still wasn't able to engage the shoes correctly. So that nut there was flared so bad from being smashed that it actually spread that bar made that little uh, catch pop out but check your hardware you can see this cable here is getting a little busted up on the little boot um, we're not going to replace that today but it will need a new brake cable but you want to look at all your hardware and stuff now in a situation like this you've got a speedometer cable you do not have to take any of this stuff loose you can leave it right on we're going to take out this, uh, take this nut off, take the actual bolt out, and um, slide it out. Set this down and just remove the brake hub, and you'll see how what we're talking about here. Now you'll notice that this side here it does not a nut. Not all bikes are made this way. Some are nuts, but most uh, most of the small Hondas have a hole in it. And what I use. I use a long punch like this. I fit in the hole in that way. It'll hold it steady while I uh, take the other side, take a wrench to the nut on the other side. <coughs> now on the smaller Hondas, this nut's a 19 millimeter. This older style, it uh, it's kind of a self-locking nut. Uh, later on. Especially in the mid to later 70s and the 80s, they started putting an actual cotter pin through. But this one's just self-locking. But I've got my uh, bar on the other side in that hole. And um, Just as a tip, it would actually probably be better to break this nut loose with the bike sit still sitting on the ground before you have it jacked up on a block or a crate like in this picture.
This is kind of stuck, so it's going to have to be tapped with a hammer. If you're going to beat on it hard, then put the nut back on it. Luckily, this one's going out fairly easy. Make note of things that come off. This is a spacer that goes on to the, if you're on the bike, the right side. Now, what I was talking about is I said, all I have to do is that I'm having to disconnect all that stuff. Just twist it a little bit. This hasn't been off in a long time. Let it sit and dangle. This normally stays up inside the, the hub. Seeing how worn out these shoes are, it's going to be best to actually back off this adjuster nut. I know I said you didn't have to remove it, and a lot of times you don't, you can just unscrew it a little bit, but in this case, those shoes are so thin, and that adjuster is so far out, it'd be hard to change those shoes out, so it's going to be best to just go ahead and break that nut loose. And you may find it better, if, if your bike has been sitting for a long time, to actually break all the nuts and bolts loose before you get started, just because they, before you actually get it set up on a crate, you can go ahead and take some things loose. Now, what I'm going to do here is just kind of pull on it with my hand. Fold it over. And you put it on pretty much about the same way. Now, please make note, this has a seal right here that runs on the, on that inside of that hub. Not all of them do, but if you, uh, you're going to have to look at your hub assembly and see if it's got a seal on the inside or to the outside, how it's put together. If it has any seals and they're worn out, now's the time to change them. This bike is going to get a major overhaul, rebuild some down, some ways down the point. So right now we just want to get the brakes back up to working where they're in adjustment and stuff. So we're not going to worry about that too much right now. I'm going to apply some grease on that speedometer gear because it looks, even though there's grease in there, it looks a little dry. So I'm going to apply some new grease on that so that'll one, it'll stick and it'll help uh, turn the speedometer cable better. Now all I've done is I've just kind of brisked over with a little small wire brush. Nothing major. It doesn't have to be super super clean, but I'm just going to wash it out a little bit with the brake part cleaner. Almost out of it. Okay, I put the uh, <clears throat> springs on the shoes. I mean, it's just whatever way you get them on. You, just, you know, as long as they're not where well, you don't have to stretch the springs. You just I moved them around until I got springs on it. I put a real light skim of uh, caliper grease or brake grease, either one you get brake grease in a tube or caliper grease in a little bottle, and I just put a little bit. If you can see it in the light and shine you just a little on there. You don't want you don't want so much it's going to ooze out and get all over the braking system. So now we're going to do what I did to remove it. Put it up there. Bottom.
just kind of manhandle them a little bit. And now you put brake shoes on a brake hub. You want to check your uh, lining to make sure you didn't get any grease or anything on it. And this is it clean, so it's ready to go back on. You can look for your little notch. If you have a speedometer on yours, you can look for the little notches and then turn your gear to get close to where that's going to be. Because you don't want it to smash. And you can tell it'll go flush. And like I said, this one had a spacer on the other side, so you want to get that spacer in when you go to pick this up. And most every hub is going to have some type of notch. This fork it's got a post sticking out this way. You can't see it from this camera angle, but it'll go in there, and that's what holds the uh, thing in place when you put the brakes on. Now in this case I'm going to have to relocate this arm because there's no way that's ever going to work. Now when you go to do a final tighten, you may want to set it because I've got this bike sitting up on a coat crate. I mean, you set it up on whatever you need to to get the wheel off the ground, and you may want to do a final tighten on it once you've uh, got the uh, uh, bike back on the ground. And I probably will go back over this because it was kind of hard to get loose. Now this may have actually been adjusted before because those shoes are pretty thin <clears throat> that is something you can do but usually when it gets down to when you can't adjust anymore it's time to change the shoes out Yeah, it hadn't been adjusted before because I only moved it one spline, so. And that's not like an actual real, like a regular nut. It's got a place that kind of catches in a notch. But if you have never had to adjust this or mess with this, then you're not even going to have to take this off. You can leave the brake cable hooked up. 
the most you might you probably have to do is back the threads off because you'll have more lining. And you want to refer to your bike's uh, spe uh, specs on free play in the uh, handle or what you're comfortable with. Some people don't like their grip to be too good. So you don't like their uh, lever to be. Uh, to the top. In other words, if you just barely touch it, it grabs. Some people like to be able to pull it in some. It just depends on the comfort of your hand. And that's it. And that's how you change out the front brakes on a small Honda. Now let's dive in and start on the back brakes. Okay, the uh, bolt that's on the back that holds the axle, it's pretty much the same as the front one. And I think on this uh, this model CT70, it's a 19 millimeter nut. And again, we're just going to use a punch, but you can use a screwdriver or anything that you got that'll fit into this hole right here. Now I'm going to give you a tip. If your chain's already adjusted, since you broke this bolt loose, you don't have to loosen up your adjusters. When you start knocking that bolt out, unless your chain's excessively already tight. If your chain's already tight, you'll have to loosen them. But if you've got about the right amount of free play, since these bikes are smaller and we're older and bigger, we kind of leave a little more free play in them to carry our weight. Plus these springs are worn out, or are getting worn out. So. Um, Loosen your bolt, but before you start trying to talk, knock the bolt out, I'm going to go ahead and back up the adjuster, back it off. This is almost, this is actually too deep for a deep weld. So, it's going to be some turning a little bit until we can. Uh, Now once you get it backed out far enough, you probably could get a deep blow on it. I'll kind of hold the brake lever with my thumb, releasing the pressure so I can turn it by hand to make it faster. But you can see it was this one, was, the brakes are so worn out, it was screwed in about as far as it's going to be able to go and still be able to uh, adjust any at all. This plastic thing has a
it has two rear brake levers, one at your foot and then one where your clutch would normally go on a manual shift. We've got one other thing that's really crucial to look at here. This bar right here locks the hub in place. Otherwise, if you hit the brakes, you just try to bend that little rod, so it has to have this bar. So, they usually put some type of a... A cotter pin or a clevis type pin. I believe that is a 12 millimeter. Now this bolt does not tighten down on this bar. The nut actually tightens down on the shoulder of that bolt and there's just a little spring washer in between it and that bar that allows it to be flexible so whenever you're hitting the brakes or suspension bounces and stuff like that it doesn't actually snap that bolt in half. If it does you may have not have back brakes so don't uh, think that it has to actually snug down on that bar. And it's uh, set in the back so you don't have to put a wrench or anything on it. So there's your nut, your flat washer which always seems to be stuck in the threads a little bit. So that tightens up against the shoulder on this bolt. And this is just like a lock washer, but it actually creates a spring tension between it and the uh, lock bar. And it's free. I'm just gonna tap the axle. When I tapped it in, this just fell off the other side. I have not turned the adjustment, so when I put it back on, it'll be just the way it was. And you'll see on this side here. So now it's free. I can slide this forward. And I'm going to just remove the chain, take it off the... That way I can drop the bill. Sometimes you get lucky. There we go. If you wonder what's falling off, this was a this is part of the brake. I should have took it off because it all it does nothing holds it in there other than that rod. And that's the bolt that I was talking about. It goes to this bar here. That hex just fits in a hex spot in the back and just maintains there. So. There is a spacer on the other side that kind of pushes up against the, the bearing. It's, so be looking for it. Sometimes they fall out, sometimes they'll stay on the wheel, but uh, I'll show you where it goes in the wheel. It, but like I said, they usually always fall out. This bike, the seal's worn out completely, so... This bike also has a spacer. A spacer on this side, too. It goes between the fork and the hub. Okay, do the same as the front brakes. Just kind of pull up. Sometimes it's hard to get out of that back one. If that one doesn't want to move, then try that one. And then just fold your shoe over. I don't know if I got out of camera on that or not. 
the new shoes come with springs so you can just throw this away or discard it. You can hang on to the springs in case you may ever need some or something. I'm going to do to these shoes what I did at the front. I'm going to put uh, brake grease on the ends where they move. One on the pivot point and one on the actual uh, cam that actuates the brakes. Because you're not looking to put a lot on there, let's get you a Q-tip. Because you don't want to grease it up so much that it'll start slinging grease inside the uh, brakes and you won't be able to stop at all. So just put a, a dab. Just a small amount there. Kind of a dab. Just enough to grease it. Then I use the dry end. And So I wash it down with a little uh, brake cleaner. That just mostly gets rid of the dirt and the dust. You can use a you can use a compressor or um, um, you know like an air hose, or you can just use canned air to blow the actual brake uh, drum out. Can't see it because I didn't have the camera moved in position, but all I did was just blow the dust out of the brake drum. When you got the wheel off, you want to inspect the bearings. These you can just check them by sticking your finger in the center of the hole of the, of the wheel and turn it. If it's smooth, then it's good. If it's a little rough, you'll want to go ahead and change the bearings while you have the rear wheel off. So now I just got to connect the springs. Do it this way as well. Okay. These go on the round dial that doesn't do anything, it's just the pivot point. Make sure your arm, your actual arm, is in the correct position. Kind of keep tension on your uh, springs. Or you stick it all together, just make sure your levers and your levers in the right position again compared to where your uh, rod goes. And now this is ready to go back together. And you can make sure it actuates, but okay, now go back together with it. I just promise you, I'll show you. This spacer on the other side just fits inside this where the seal is. Like I said, sometimes they stay in, sometimes they fall out. This seal's so worn out, it falls out. So yours may be too, but just uh, make sure it's in when you go to set it up in there. You can't put it in once it's up in there.
this rod loves getting away. Before you put everything together, put your chain back on. Be sure to put the chain adjuster on the other side, which you can't see in this camera angle. But uh, I never, I never turned the nut to, to change the adjustment, so just put it on the other side before you put your nut on, and kind of push the tire forward. Before you put your locking or tie your rod locking rod bar in while it's loose, it'd be a good time to put your uh, brake adjuster bar in. Like I said, all this thing does is just slide in and pretty much holds it in place is the uh, rod and this nut. It's funny how they can fall out, but they can't go back in. You don't want to adjust it, all you want to do is just get the, the nut on it, get some thread started. We got to put our bolt in. And you want to make sure that that bar slides over that shoulder. And the order is, this is the spring washer, which slides over top that big shoulder. The flat washer, which locks up against the shoulder itself. And then your nut. And the rest is just basically adjustments. So. If you do have to take these loose or you want to adjust your chain, I can do another video on that, but these adjusters have a little mark dead center on the top and there's little marks on the sway arm. And what you then it's on both sides and now you make sure they're in the same position as on both sides, that way you keep your rear tire straight in line. And that's how you do uh, rear brakes. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave, go into the comments and leave me a comment and I'll usually respond to them within 24 hours. If not, go to my uh, website. The link should be down in the description to get there. Uh, I always I try to answer everybody's questions. Um, I'm pretty much a, one of the rare uh, automotive uh, sites that actually give out free advice without charging for it. But uh, please contact me and if you uh, like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, always check back because I'm always working on a variety of things, motorcycles, cars, weird things. It, nothing, nothing's ever normal for the rod shop. So please check back and thanks for watching.